Hello, welcome everyone. For DC action for Assange uh, today and tomorrow are important days. Um, and so we have a program of speakers and information today. So thank you for coming. Yes, uh, thank you everyone for coming out and especially uh, some of the people involved in DC Action for Assange who were not able to be here today. Um, we have Ann Wilcox who's over in London and one of our stalwarts who started our peace vigil, Paula up in Boston, who is behind the scenes doing a lot of work as well. Um, I ask everyone to just take a moment to um, think about Julian Assange, not just in regards to the actions that he's done and the truth that he has revealed, but also the fact that he, he is a human, he has a family, he has a brother and parents who are very concerned about him, he has a wife and children too. So if we could all just take a moment to start, uh, just a moment in, in silence to think about Julian and keep him in our hearts and prayers uh, as his health is not the best. So he's taking a moment um, for Julian. And I thank everyone again, and we're not here just to ask Julian not to be extradited to the U.S., but more importantly to actually be free and return to his family in Australia. Um, so we have a few speakers lined up, but we'll start uh, just with some introductions and a little bit about Assange. Um, so there is no doubt that Julian Assange is a political prisoner. The United States is trying to intimidate other journalists by showing that if they publish truthful information that reveals the errors of the United States government or officials, they are under threat of being imprisoned, prosecuted, and tortured. Assange did nothing more than publish truthful information, protected under the Second or particularly the First Amendment. Let us also not forget that Assange has never resided in the United States. He is an Australian citizen and his outlet, WikiLeaks, is based out of Iceland. Assange has been under threat for too long. The loss of freedom began over 10 years ago and intensified four years ago when he was further attacked and punished, being put in Belmarsh prison in solitary confinement. Let us also not forget that Assange is a human being with a soul that wants to make the world better by spreading truth and showing the masses what is really going on. He's also a father, son, and husband with a family that wants nothing more for him to be released and come home to Australia. At any point, officials at the Department of Justice and Attorney General Mayor Garland could choose to drop all charges in the pursuit to extradite Assange to the United States to prosecute him for journalism and freedom of the press. Please continue to inform your family and friends about Assange, as many of the United States still don't know who he is or have forgotten about him. I especially urge everyone to try and inform the younger generations and those in college about Assange because it is not being taught to them in schools and many are unfortunately unaware of him. Please continue to come from a place of peace to open the hearts of others while revealing the many times uncomfortable truths that are out there. And with that, I'll hand it to Martha. Thank you, Brian. The DC Action for Assange holds vigils, two vigils every month and has for years. Currently, the first Sunday of every month, we are across from Merrick Garland's home in Bethesda, Attorney General Garlic, Merrick Garland, uh, calling for uh, no extradition for Julian Assange. And the third Sunday of the month, we've been going to the White House to have our vigil. Uh, Sundays between 4 and 5 o'clock. Also, there are other things that can be done in between uh, the, the vigils and the rallies such as what's taking place today. Uh, there's a House Resolution 934. Uh, it's a resolution that is very simple and straightforward. It's expressing the sense 
of the House of Representatives that regular journalist activities are protected under the First Amendment and that the United States ought to drop all charges against and attempts to extradite Julian Assange. So far, we do not have uh, a lot of uh, signers to this. We should have, make sure that everyone signs on to this so those that want to help participate to get more signers, uh, we welcome that. We must ask more of the Democrats to sign on to this uh, because right now the Republicans outnumber the, the Democratic uh, signers. So please let me know if this interests you. Now, without further ado, we'll call our first speaker, uh, Medea Benjamin, who is the co-founder of Code Pink, Women for Peace. She's an activist, author of a dozen books, including uh, one on drone wealth and warfare, the war in Ukraine, inside Iran, Kingdom of the Unjust in Saudi Arabia, and many others. Uh, Medea, please say more about what you're involved in, as well as our concern about Julian Assange. So while we are out here today, the UN is holding its third deliberation on Israel's genocide in Gaza. And we have the third example of the US shamefully vetoing that resolution. And it makes you wonder, will the US ever be held accountable for complicity in war crimes? Well, we only have, unfortunately, to look back at the last two decades with the U.S. committing war crimes directly in Iraq, Afghanistan, and elsewhere. And while Julian is languishing in prison with the threat of extradition, what happened to George Bush, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, all those who directly lied to get us into illegal wars, commit war crimes, and yet never, ever, ever be held accountable for those. Think about the U.S. involvement in torture and abuse in Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo. Think about the U.S. use of white phosphorus and cluster bombs and depleted uranium. Think about the hundreds of thousands of people who died because of U.S. lies, and yet zero accountability, zero. No talk even of imprisoning George Bush or Condoleezza Rice or even Hillary Clinton for her crimes as Secretary of State. Nothing, nothing at all. And so you fast forward today with the hopes that Netanyahu will one day be held responsible for war crimes. Yes. But will he? We have no idea, but we know that it's the powerful that get away with these war crimes. And who instead is imprisoned the one who tells the truth about those war crimes. Julian Assange, the one who outed these criminals. Julian Assange, the one who wanted the world community to know about the war crimes that were being committed. Yes. Julian Assange, who understood how powerful truth can be. Yes. And yet here he is, languishing in prison. Here he is potentially very soon to be extradited to the United States. So this is a moment when we have to reflect on how wrong the world order is 
when we have to reflect on how unjust it is that the truth tellers are the ones that are in prison and how much we have to work for Julian Assange to never be extradited to the United States because we know he will never get a fair trial yes. here in the United States. Yes. 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 And we know he has done nothing wrong. No. On the contrary, right. if anything, he should be awarded for having told the truth. Yes. Yes. So I'm happy to be out here with you today and hopefully we will be able one day to celebrate the release of Julian Assange and be able to, in person, give him our thanks for having exposed the war criminals and having told the American people exactly what it is their government has been doing. Yes. Thank you. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. Arrest the war criminals. Arrest the war criminals. No extradition. No extradition. No extradition. Thank you. Thank you, Medina. And now next up is Esther Averam, uh, a multidisciplinarian artist, author, journalist, producer, and host on Pacifica Radio of On the Ground, Voices of Resistance from the Nation's Capital. Thank you. Woo! All right, all right. And please tell us more about what you are up to. All the incredible work. You said enough for <laughs> So free, free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian Assange! You know, I'm really happy to be out here with you today. And, you know, my heart is broken in so many ways as, as a journalist who believes in journalism, believes that journalism can make the difference. When people hear the truth, when people know the truth, it makes a difference. When people saw the children of Vietnam being slaughtered, being hit with napalm, you know, being, being tortured in our incursion in that country and our attack on that country it made the big difference similarly right now when people are hearing and seeing real pictures the footage the pictures of how people are are dying and being tortured in palestine it makes a difference but we're not getting that from our corporate news organizations right, right. so it's just a really historical time. I don't know if any of us thought that we would actually witness in front of us uh, a genocide, men, women, and children murdered, maimed, tortured, starved, being deliberately starved. And so it's also a historical time for media. And like I said, our corporate media is not doing the job. So we know that WikiLeaks told us more than a decade ago about Israel's intentional genocide of the Palestinian people. I want to just read a little bit from the cables that they released in 2008. And these are U.S. diplomatic cables. In 2008, Israel told U.S. officials that Israel would keep Gaza's economy, quote, on the brink of collapse. End quote, at a level just above that of a humanitarian crisis, according to these cables, published by Norway's Often Posted. Quote, as part of their overall embargo plan against Gaza, Israeli officials have confirmed to U.S. economic officers on multiple occasions that they intend to keep Gazan, the Gazan economy on the brink of collapse without quite pushing it over the edge. On November 3rd, 2008, U.S. cable stated Israel wanted to maintain Gaza, quote, functioning at the lowest level possible, consistent with avoiding a humanitarian crisis, end quote. Shame. 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 In fact, on the ground in Gaza, international aid agencies warned that ordinary life was becoming intolerable, quote, it is causing an ongoing deterioration in the social, economic, and environmental detriment of health. 
It is hampering the provision of medical supplies and the training of health staff. While the indiscriminate sanctions are affecting the entire population of Gaza, women, children, and the elderly are the first victims. The cables continue. People in Gaza are rapidly running out of food, fuel, and medicine because of the Israeli military's restrictions on emergency supplies, aid agencies warned. Save the Children called the situation a catastrophe. It is preventing patients with serious medical conditions from getting timely, specialized treatment. The agencies highlighted the case of a student, Fida Hiji, who died of cancer while waiting for Israeli permission to go to the hospital for a bone marrow transplant. Shame! Shame! So I just want to say, like Medea said, instead of Julian Assange, being in jail, these apartheid leaders of this Zionist entity need to be in jail. Right. Instead of Julian Assange facing a trial, Netanyahu needs to be in the dock at the head. We know that Ben Gavir and Smoltrich need to be investigated for war crimes. They are criminals, but Julian Assange is a journalist. So I'm just here to say, free Julian Assange. He's a truth teller who dared to tell the truth about settler colonialism, the backroom deals and conversations to keep the global south down, to keep the people of the global south down. And lastly, as Congress and Biden try to send more money to this uh, genocide in Gaza, more money to the war in Ukraine, they are complicit in this, in this genocide. And we need to uh, understand that Julian Assange called it what it is. He called it a money laundering operation to take our tax dollars and feed it to the military industrial complex to keep these illegal wars going. So free Julian Assange, all power to the people. We have more guest speakers and this is an open mic. So everyone is welcome to uh, say something. Uh, but before we have more speakers, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Sister Lucy Murphy, who we all know so dearly. Uh, she is a singer, a song leader, an activist, a community organizer. Uh, she's been with us since the 60s, giving her art to the people. She's performed throughout the world, including songs in many languages. Uh, she sung with uh, the Black Workers Chorus, the People's Music Network, uh, the DC Labor Chorus. She's with all of us. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Martha. And as you know, I'm just here to get you to sing. We we shall not be moved. We shall not. We shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Drop the charges. Drop the charges. We shall not be moved. Drop the charges. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Free Assange, free Assange. We shall not be moved. Free Assange, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moving free Peltier. Free Peltier. We shall not be moved. Free Peltier. We shall not be moved. Just like a tree 
that's planted by the water. We shall not be. The people are united. The people are united. We shall not be moved. The people are united. We shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. United in the struggle, we shall not be moved. United in the struggle, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, we shall not be. One more time, drop the charges, drop the charges, we shall not be moved. Drop the charges. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree, just like a tree that's planted by the water, we shall not be moved. And now back to Martha. Thank you, Lucy. Our next guest speaker is Honor Goldfield, and she is a creative radical, filmmaker, journalist, producer, editor. She also hosts a uh, Common Center with Lee Camp, uh, Common Center, a weekly radical news text. Uh, for some of her creativity, go to Art killingapathy.com Thank you, and tell us more. Thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to share something because I got this question a lot when I have covered Julian Assange or when I've spoken out about Assange, particularly at a time when just down the street, monsters parading as human beings are sending more and more money Are sending more and more money to perpetuate genocide it can feel really weird to talk about one guy so I want to share a little bit about why this one guy is important because yeah he is one man and he is one man whose actions shifted the massive gears of Empire to focus their might on this one man why why would the largest Empire the world has ever seen try so hard to silence one man well, because he opened governments, and he wouldn't stop. He forced the empire to stare down its own glaring inadequacies and vicious lies by exposing it for what it is, not a beacon of justice or freedom. It is a polluted city upon a hill of bones, built on genocide and slavery, whose systems have not changed but rather evolved. He exposed weaknesses that are lacquered and paraded to us at strengths. The inherent fragility of a system that relies on terror to maintain power, both at home and abroad, and that exposure is unforgivable. It is also a shared trait beyond our so-called borders. Esther pointed out the cables that WikiLeaks shared about and from Israel some 14 years before this current genocide began. And guess what? He was also accused of anti-Semitism. Still, Assange's exposures did something even more dangerous. He gave people tools to dismantle our oppression. He gave us a map of this maze of propagandized suffering and named the architects. And that shit is unforgivable. And all that is why this one man is being tortured and silenced by the largest empire the world has ever seen. We must remember that terrorist regimes always try to silence truth-tellers and storytellers. Those who keep the threads of life alive in underground mycelial networks of precious lines, encrypted notes, whispered heartbeats, and promises. This is precisely why Israel has murdered some with precise targeting more than 120 journalists in Gaza since October 7th. Over 75% of all journalists killed in 2023 died because of the genocide perpetrated by Israel. 
Truth tellers are that dangerous and scary to the ruling power. They are that scary to the oppressors because they not only know that the official narrative is some bullshit, but they know how to get that message out. And once that mes message does get out, that is the kind of shit that can topple empires. So yes, Assange is one man. He is one man whose fate marks the fate of countless others, whose fate is inextricably linked to all those who tear at the facade of empire, who won't sit down and shut up, even in the face of imprisonment, tanks, bombs, or indeed genocide. If Julian Assange is a brought to this country and tried for espionage, the people in this building, on this street, in this city, in this empire will officially have criminalized real journalism and truth telling. And in so doing, they will have condemned us all to their darkness of propaganda, devastating our ability to fight not only for the present, but for the future. So this man's fate is not only vital for all those who want to tell the truth, but all of us who want to know it. And that's why we fight for this one man. So that he might continue to speak, so that we might continue to act, so that the people from every river to every sea might be free. Thank you. Well, we have another guest speaker, Kaimon Freeman, an artist, activist, playwright, co-founder of We Act Radio. He is a statehood Green Party candidate for DC delegate, and so much more. So please let us know what you're up to as well as. Thank you. Thank you. Peace to everybody that's here and the sounds of our voices. Uh, my name is Kimon Freeman, anger black man in therapy, and yes, I am a congressional candidate for uh, the 34-year incumbent, Eleanor Holmes Norton. Um, I don't take pride in saying that because sometimes uh, we have to do what needs to be done doesn't mean that it's in enjoyable. Um, Eleanor Holmes Norton is a respected uh, figure in this city. Uh, she was the number two person for the March on Washington. In fact, if you watch the Netflix film on Bayard Rustin right now, whenever he says Eleanor, he's talking about her. And she made her bones um, as an activist. She was one of the, the leaders of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa and camped out at South African embassy, risking an arrest to bring attention to the atrocities of apartheid regime in South Africa. Unfortunately, 34 years later, she has lost that same fire in her belly because she was unwilling to even say the word cease fire um, on, on the genocide that's happening now in apartheid Israel. I was, yes, um, I wish shame was enough because some of these people are shameless. Uh, it's shameful that they are so shameless. Uh, and she's not alone. Uh, our hero, Bernie Sanders, can't bring himself to say the words uh, genocide. And so these are things that we have to wrestle with. And um, we have to realize who we are really dealing with. Let me give you an example who we're dealing with. Um, every war starts off alive. Every war America has been involved in starts off in a lie. Do you know that America has only had 17 years of so-called peace in its entire existence? It's 250 years old or so, somewhere around those, those bouts, and only have had 17 years of peace. You know why? Because this is the Roman civilization. It's based upon conqueror empire. It's, uh, empires have to constantly expand. The moment they stop expanding, they are contracting. And we are witnessing in real time that America is in decline. And you can look at that by looking at the choices we have in this election. This election has the two oldest candidates in the history of America competing. And the only, the number two is them in the last election. So they're the top two. That is the desperation of the system to perpetuate um, uh, its, its hegemony, its imperialism. White supremacy is dying in real time. And this is what we're dealing with. That's why they go to such desperate extents to do this. But let me um, bring in some historical context, because some of y'all might think this is just the angry black man in therapy part. But I just spoke to my therapist, so I'm really fresh on this. And I think we all should have some therapy. Uh, and just for uh, another historical reference, um, James Baldwin said to be black and relatively conscious in America is, is to be in a perpetual state of rage. All right. 
We must recognize that we can't solve our problem now until there is a radical redistribution of economic and political power. This means a revolution of values and other things. We must see now that the evils of racism, economic exploitation, and militarism are all tied together. You can't really get rid of one without getting rid of the others. The whole structure of American life must be changed. America is a hypocritical nation and we must put our own house in order. That is the radical side of Martin Luther King. And for our dear brother Julian Assange, he says you have to start with the truth. The truth is the only way that we can get anywhere because any decision making that is based upon lies or ignorance can't lead to a good conclusion. All right, let's talk about some of these lies. Um, we all know that the war in Iraq was based upon a lie. There was no weapons of mass destruction. And if they were, guess who, they, who, got, who gave it to them? <laughs> okay? Uh, in Libya, we know that that was over a lie. Gaddafi wasn't torturing people. He wasn't about to bomb the world. Why did they go to Libya? Why did they go to Iraq? It's not necessarily enough to say what they did as much as to say when they do. Any detective worth his salt will establish a timeline. Here's a timeline for Iraq. Saddam had committed to switching from using US dollars and trading his oil with euros. That is why Euro, Euro, um, Euro, European Union wasn't on the um, supporting the Iraq invasion. It was only London and UK. The pound is separate. Remember that Brexit? When they decided to switch from the dollar to the euro, that's when they invaded. When Gaddafi said he was no longer accepting dollars for their oil, that they wanted to establish a gold standard and unite Africa, that sealed his fate. They invaded. Look at the sorry state of Libya. Look at it everywhere this country has gone and invaded and show me where they have brought democracy. They have improved the situation. They have brought freedom. What, what, are you kidding me? Look at this city. This is the nation's capital. If America was worth the, the paper it's printed on, you would think that the 68 square miles of the nation's capital in the so-called greatest country in the world would have the what? Best schools, the best roads, the best hospitals, the best everything. It would be the shiny city on the hill to be an example, not only for the country, but for the world. But do we have that here? No, we do not. D.C. is the most dangerous city in America for a black woman of any social economic background to give birth. D.C. has twice the illiteracy rate. D.C. has twice the child poverty rate. And if D.C. was a state, it would have been the most violent state in America in 2022. Is that not hypocrisy? Is this the model we're supposed to be following? I think not. But there are places on this world that does exist that has peace and justice. One of them is Vienna, Austria. I urge everybody to look them up. Vienna, Austria, who, by the way, was funded by the Marshall Plan, i.e. U.S. taxpayers' money to be built after the war, is just that they did one of the best jobs with the money. Why is that? They have social housing in Vienna, Austria. They have one of the lowest uh, crime rates in the world in Vienna, Austria. You know why? Because they don't have a ghetto in Vienna, Austria. They don't have um, homeless people in Vienna, Austria. Nobody pays more than 30% of their income in housing in Vienna, Austria. And you know why? Because they have an equal system. We do not have it here. But what's different from Vienna, Austria and the nation's capital? Vienna, Austria is almost completely 100% white. They don't have the racist problem. Because in this country, and in so many other Western civilizations, they have to keep these people down. You don't want, I don't want those people to have what I have. That's why we're the only industrialized nation that doesn't have health care. Julian Assange is a journalist that was exposing war crimes, and he has been suffering. He has been tortured. He has been uh, vilified. They called Nelson Mandela a terrorist until he was president of South Africa. Let's get this straight. Let's tell it all the way, truthfully, what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the fall of the modern-day Roman Empire because the moment it stops expanding, it will contract, it will fall. 
and we need to understand that. But unfortunately, a wounded, am wounded animal is a very dangerous animal, and we're dealing with a very wounded animal. And so, 2024 election, between the two oldest candidates in the history of the country, both of them seem to agree on uh, <laughs> some of this foreign policy. But I like to think that Cornel West said it best. He says that Joe Biden will lead us to World War III. Donald Trump will lead us to a civil war. So I think those are our choices. And if I had to vote for this, I think we need to acknowledge that this is the supreme opportunity for a third party to raise his head, and we should have a record turnout for third party candidates in this election. We should no longer be subscribing to the lesser of two evils. We should not be shamed into holding our nose and casting our ballot for war crimes to be committed in our names just because the other guy's worse. I want to understand that if only 5% of the national vote goes to a third party, you know what happens? It breaks the monopoly of the two-party political system. That they will be uh, eligible for federal funding. That they will be put on the debate stage. That will break the two-party political system monopoly. The last time it happened, it was a little guy named Ro uh, Ross Perot. But he was a billionaire acting independently. And at that time, it was only 2% of the national popular vote was required. That's why he's able to buy him his way into it. Now they raised it to 5%. But I tell you, if you do not want to vote for Biden, and if you do not want to vote for Trump, you do have another option. It's not paper or plastic. It's your own bag, and it's recyclable. And we need to bring our own bag to the table to change this system. We have the blueprint. M Martin Luther King said it best. A nation that spends more on war than on social uplift is approaching spiritual doom. So I hope there's doom for the shameless people because we have to understand that power concedes nothing without demand. And this beautiful sister over here has a, a banner that says, U.S. taxes and prisons, Julian Assange. And it cannot be a true statement spoken. U.S. taxes are killing people in Palestine. U.S. taxes are sub subsidizing the genocide of the Palestinian people and the wars around the world. And Alexander Haig, who was chief of staff under um, uh, uh, Reagan and Nixon, said it best. He says, let them march all they want as long as they continue to pay their taxes. So we have choices. We have opportunities to address this system. It's just a question of what we are willing to do and what is going to work. And we have to become cogs in the machine if we really want to change things in this country. I hope that each and every one of you will rise to the occasion and do what you can. And this election, 2024, is our inflection point in this country. And for the sake of Mamiya Abu-Jamal, another imprisoned journalist, for the sake of Julian Assange, another imprisoned journalist, and all political prisoners around the world, and those who are dying at the boot of this military industrial complex for profit, may we be victorious in our efforts to change this system in our lifetime. Thank you, and free them all. Yes, thank you, free all political prisoners, free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange! Free Julian Assange! We have an opportunity for an open mic, and I know a few people do want to say something before we conclude with Lucy uh, leading us in song. So uh, this is your opportunity. Thank you. My name is Sue Wheaton. Uh, as you can see, I have Speaking a Kennedy button mic. on. Oh. And, and I need everybody here uh, needs to know. Everybody here needs to know that Robert Kennedy Jr. First of all, is running for president as an independent. And Kennedy has said that if he were to win the presidency, he would free Assange on the first day of his presidency. Um, well, I'm, I want to say right now that because we're at the Assange place, uh, for Assange, that he has said that. He's gone on record as saying that. I also want to uh, say that he is running. Um, right now we are gathering signatures in Maryland. If we get enough signatures, he'll be on the Maryland general ballot in November. 
as an independent. So if any of you are registered voters in, in Maryland and would like, doesn't mean you're committed to vote for him, but you can help us get a choice. And so if you uh, would not do that and you're a registered voter, see me and I'll make sure that we add your name to those petitioning for a choice uh, on, on the November ballot. He does not Thank support you. the Palestinians. Neither does any of them. Yes, so uh, the independent candidates do uh, support the freedom for Assad. Hi everyone, my name is Sue Udry. I'm with Defending Rights and Def Dissent, <laughs> and my colleague Chip Gibbons is over in London co uh, covering the Assange hearing, otherwise he'd be here today. Speaking, as you all know, he can speak with way more knowledge and um, more passion and articulation than I can, but I want to let you know that he's going to be doing a live stream today at 5 o'clock to give us his analysis of what happened today at the hearing. That'll be happening over the Defending Rights and Dissent Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, we, I, I think everybody has spoken so eloquently, so I don't need to remind us of how, how we're missing the voice of Julian Assange in Gaza right now. Where is our Chelsea Manning in Gaza right now? What a difference that would make to have the real story coming out of Gaza. Um, and. And he is not just one, he is just one man, but what he represents is press freedom for us all. And if he is convicted, if he is extradited, um, I fear for press freedom, their journalists will just be afraid to bring us the stories that we need to hear. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Free, free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian Assange! Free, free Julian Assange! Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Martha. If there is anybody else who would like to speak before we call on Lucy. Well, uh, my name is John Kelly. Uh, just a, a couple of thoughts. One, we're standing in front of the Depart Department of Justice. Uh, it's easy to say it's the Department of Injustice. But worse than that, it's the Department of Lawlessness. It's the Department of Lawlessness is what it is. Uh, and I saw a clip just the other day of uh, Julian, this was many years ago, and not only is Netanyahu complicit in what's going on, the people down at the end of the street complicit in going on, what's going on, uh, but years ago, uh, Julian uh, uh, accused the press, the, his fellow journalists, they're complicit in what's going on in Gaza, and around the world and the crimes of the U.S. They're part of the whole ugly, horrible, uh, what's going on in the world. Thank you. Okay, if there isn't, I guess. Yeah, thank you all for being here. It's really comforting to be with uh, supporters of uh, Julian. Um, I don't have any more to say after all these uh, good speeches, but I, oh, my name is Sabine Dorn. Um, I, I just wanted to say that it is not only stunning how few people in the uh, public are, uh, are aware of what is going on with Julian Assange and how little they are worried about this. Uh, but that is, of course, the uh, consequence of the mainstream media not reporting on it. And uh, I wanted to say that the fact that they are taking a foreign journalist and accusing him uh, of violating the Espionage uh, Act is not only a huge danger for national journalists, but also for foreign journalists, because if they can take Julian, they can take anybody else who they don't like, who, who is uh, talking about the uh, crimes of this government. And other governments could follow suit and also uh, grasp uh, journalists that are in their territory and uh, US journalists and uh, do the same that we are trying to do to Julian Assange. Thank you. Oh, 
We who believe in justice cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in justice cannot rest, cannot rest. We who believe in justice cannot rest until it comes. Let me hear you. Cannot rest. We who believe in justice cannot rest until it comes. The older I get, the better I know that the secret of my going on is when the reins are in the hands of the young who dare to run against the storm. We who believe in justice cannot rest, cannot rest. We who believe in justice cannot rest until it comes. The older I get, the better I know that the secret of my going on is when the reins are in the hands of the young who dare to run against the storm. We who believe in justice cannot rest, cannot rest. We who cannot rest until it comes. Struggling myself don't mean a whole lot. I've come to realize that teaching others to stand and fight is the only way a struggle survives. We who believe in justice cannot rest, cannot rest. We who believe in justice cannot rest until it comes. I'm a woman who speaks in a voice and I must be heard. Sometimes I can be quite difficult. I bow to no man's word. We who believe in justice cannot rest. Cannot rest. We who believe in justice cannot rest. No extradition! No extradition! No 
extradition. No extradition. No extradition. No extradition. No extradition. No extradition.